Welcome back to the Kilted Texan, and you read that right. You too can cut your level one charging times in half. And while it may sound like clickbait, it's not actually, because the EVSEs that are included with the Volkswagen ID4 do support 240 volts. Now, it does take a little bit of equipment, just a little bit. It's, I think it cost me about $20 worth of equipment, but I cut my level one charging times in half. And uh, even more so when I'm using my GM chargers that happen to have come with other electric cars that I've had. So we'll go ahead and we'll go through some of the information and we'll show you some of the demonstrations on it and sit back and hopefully we learn something good. All right, so here we go. Here's the mathematics that breaks down the VW EVSEs versus the GM EVSEs versus level two and DCFC, the DC fast charging. Now, when we're talking about the wall and this this is the standard wall charger it comes in the back of the vw uh and this is you know take it plug it into your wall plug it into the car you're going to end up getting about 1.1 to 1.2 kilowatt which is why on a 77 kilowatt hour battery it takes forever and a day to get this thing if you got a battery that's lower than a snake's belly in a wagon rut you're going to be sitting there looking at you know high 50s 60 hour type times to end up charging this sucker and that's just uh, nobody's got that kind of time so that's why the standard wall plug uh, just really doesn't work for a whole lot of people some people it will you know some people are you know they you know put 10 miles a day in their car and that's fine um, and I'm I'm kind of in that particular group but uh, I have, I've got a couple of electrical tricks that help me to get by without doing that now with the GB, uh, GM EBSEs, 120 volts, 12 amps, you get about 1.44 kilowatt. Uh, it's a little bit faster. So, uh, you know, that's when you're getting into the high 50 range from a completely dead ID4 battery. Um, now here's what I'm talking about here. We can take that standard supplied VW EBSE and we can run 240 volts through it. The internals are fine to be able to do it. Uh, the European internals all run on 220, so no problem with it. So they, they will take the 240 volts with no issue. Um, uh, but, it, I mean, if you hook yours up and it cooks it beyond all recognition, don't come crying to me. It is, you know, it's it's one of those deals that, uh, you know, this is a, a do-at-your-own-risk. But basically, 240 volts at 10 amps equals 200 or 2.4 kilowatt. So... Essentially, you're cutting your 60-hour charge times down to about 30 hours. And you get a little bit better efficiency just because running at the higher voltage does get better efficiency, so you're probably more like 28, 29 hours. So, you know, and I will show you some demonstrations of the different speeds that the dash actually reads here in just a sec. But I do the same thing with my GM EVSEs, but I run them at 240 volts, and I have been for the last year, uh, actually about a year and a half, and it's just it's been working for me and i get honestly i get about 245 volts and a little over 12 amps so i'm in uh, usually somewhere in the neighborhood of about three kilowatt but you know standard mathematics says 2.8 kilowatt um and we're looking my chart my times about a day to end up going from a dead battery although i usually never run them dead and i usually never run them all the way up to 100 percent either i usually run them to 70 percent for battery longevity um, then you come to the level two charging. I've got several level two chargers. I'm just using my my level ones hooked up to 240 volts because I can charge both my Cadillac and my ID4 at the same time, and it doesn't have any issues. Where if I hooked up my level two charger, I'd only be able to charge one at a time, and then I have to actually think about it. So I don't like to think about stuff. It's not fun. So. When I take a level two charging, mine as a 30 amp charger goes to 7.2 kilowatt. I can basically take a battery and a VW ID4 from dead to fully charged, a little over 10 hours. Not not a whole lot of big big strains. Um, there is a charger for the ID4. The ID4 will accept up to 11 kilowatt, which would take the battery from completely dead to completely charged in seven hours with no issue. Um, then, of course, we're all familiar with DCFC, DC fast charging. Uh, we can get anywhere between 30 kilowatt all the way to 350 kilowatt. Now, of course, the VW ID4 right now is limited to either 125 kilowatt in the U.S. or 135 kilowatt in Europe, um, as long as you got the software upgrade. 
But so essentially we're talking less than an hour to go from dead to fully charged. Even with the different fluctuations and everything else, as long as as long as the the fast charging station is up to par, as long as your battery temperature isn't all out of whack, and as long as the outside temperature, a bunch of different fa factors, but essentially you're looking at about an hour to go from dead to charged. So those are the different levels of charging here, and let's look at the examples, um, and we'll show you kind of how I do the 240 volt run through the, the charger, and uh, we'll go from here. Now the way that I build these particular cords is I use the appliance extension cords you know and these are regular just the regular three-pronged extension cords and i hook them up to a 240 volt plug because the internals on these chargers on the evses that come with the vehicles the internals they don't make a european version and then they just skimp and make a u.s version well, at least most of them don't vw and gm don't so that's why i can do this on both of those chargers um, but essentially uh, between those two chargers, they're the exact same internals. They just basically lop off the end and put on either a 110 plug or a 220 plug, depending on whether or not it's going to Europe or it's coming to the U.S. So what we end up doing is we can feed the EVSE 220, 240 volts, whatever, and then it'll take its amperage, whatever it's set at, and it'll push it to the car. We'll go through some mathematics and we'll show you what, you know, kilowatt range and everything else uh, here in just a second. But essentially the way that we do this, or the way that I do it, at least I take these appliance extension cords and then I get whatever 240 volt plug that I need and I hook it up. This one, this particular one, I believe is a, a 1030. Uh, this one fits the dryer plug at my ranch. Uh, it does not fit the one here. The one I've got here is a NEMA 1450. It goes on a 50 amp plug. That's why I can run 24 amps with no issue. I can run two of these extension cords to two of the chargers without actually overloading or meeting that 80% rule. Um, the 80% rule is saying that if you have a 50 amp plug, 80% of 50 amps would be 40 amps. You don't want to go over 40 amps feeding power through it or else you start risking the trip in the breaker and all that good stuff. So uh, the one at the ranch is a 1030. Uh, technically I could run two charges off of that, but I'll never have two of my electric cars up there at the same time. Just, I probably never will. Um, but essentially, uh, what we do is we just basically take this and if you burn your house down, you know, make sure that you check your, your, your documentation on this to set it up. But essentially the outside plugs are those two main blades up top. These two or the two outside wires match up to the two top blades there. Those are the two outside wires. So these go to these two blades. The one in the center is the ground. The ground, of course, goes to that one down there. So when I wire these two together, essentially that's feeding uh, 120 volts to one side, 120 volts to the other side, and then the ground to the bottom part. So that the 240 volts that end up going through it go through the charger and go through the EVSE and then feed the car the 240 volts and at 10 amps for the Volkswagen EVSE and then 12 amps for my GM charges that I showed you. So that's the way they do it. And the way that that works, you know, if I'm going to the ranch and I've got 10 hours, uh, if I'm only feeding 1.4 kilowatts, you know, essentially if I'm only getting three hours back or three uh, miles for every hour worth of charge that I'm going and I'm staying at the ranch for 10 hours, um, I only get 30 miles of range, but if I'm there and I get even seven miles of range, it means I get 70 miles to get back. And that's plenty for me to either make the Austin, uh, EA station or, um, and depending if I take the GM charger with me, that means that I get a hundred miles because the fact it's getting almost 10 miles per hour worth of charge. Um, that means that I get 100 miles, I could probably make it all the way back home at that point and then just plug in when I got home and not even worry about trying to plug in somewhere on the on the trip back. So, um, so that makes it nice in that particular deal, being able to cut my charge times in half actually makes it where I don't have to stop anywhere along the way. If I go to the ranch, plug in, then when I'm ready to come home, go ahead and hop in the car, come home, and I don't have to stop anywhere where if I just use the regular 120 or 110 volt plug, I get screwed into having to stop somewhere for a while. 
And again, with the ID4s, it's pretty quick because I can use a GT DC fast charger in the South Austin. But being able to skip that particular steps makes it awful nice. And that's why sometimes just even doubling the charge there is fine. And I have two level two chargers. Neither one of them are hooked up right now. One of them I popped the cord on and it's broke. And the other one, um, I just don't have hooked up because I don't need it. And it basically me using the plug, I can charge both my electric cars instead of just one really fast at a time. So I don't mind running the slower charge because it gives me all the juice that I need during the day. And while, you know, if I go a long way and I've got to charge up a ways, I'm probably not going to go a long way two days in a row. And it, it works for me and it may not work for you. There, there may be reasons why you need a level two charger and that's fine. And it, you know, there's no shame in that. If you drive a lot more than I do, that's, that's totally up to you. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I don't need more than say a hundred miles range in a day, normal days. And that's why I also only charge my ID4 to 70% just for battery longevity and all that good stuff. Well, here we are hooked up to regular level one charging, 120 volt, 10 amp, just regular old plugged into a wall socket. And this is the kind of charging we're getting here. If you'll notice, comes up to right out about three miles per hour. That's how much you're gonna get on a standard wall socket. So when you use that, that's what you do. Now let's move on to level two. And this is gonna be your typical speeds off of regular level two charger. Just a regular old charge point charger. Put it in here. Well, it says zero miles per hour, but it says that it's charging. Wait, it's reaching. Apparently not. Now it's saying nothing. There we go. 19 miles per hour. So it's charging at 19 miles per hour here at a charge point, a level two charger. That's gonna be your normal speed on the level two. So now let's see what happens when we throw 240 volts through the stock charger. All right, there is my 240 volt plug. And now she's pulling 9.5 amps at 244 volts. See, nine and a half amps, 244 volts. It's charging my V-dub. So if we come out here, we can see wires come out of the wall, through the wall, into my trashed out garage. What kind of redneck would I be without a trashed out garage? There's the first volt charger. I've got it set up to where I'm running two off of it. But that runs 240 volts, 12 amps. And there's a second bolt charger. Again, 240 volts, 12 amps, because I charge both my Cadillac and my ID4 here. But right now, I've got the other side of that 240 hooked up to the VW charger. And if you'll notice, it runs all the way out and it's plugged in. The other reason I usually use the GM chargers is because the cords are longer. So let's see how many miles per hour this thing is picking up. Oh, let me get in it. All right, charging. She's getting seven miles per hour. So as you can see, that's a little bit better than double the three miles per hour we were getting when just running a straight level one charge. So while it is not a level two and it's not even half of a level two, it's pretty good. And it's better than just leaving it plugged in. It, it will cut your charging times in half. And while two amp difference may not seem like a lot, those GM charges being able to go 12 amp versus the 
VW only doing 10 is the difference between seven and nine miles per hour worth of charging. So there you have it. You can take your standard given wall charger from Volkswagen, hook it up to 240 volts and cut your charging times in half with just those couple of pieces of equipment. Go ahead and I'll drop uh, links in the description down below if you want to. No pressure. Don't don't think you need to, you know, click them or whatever. Just whatever you want to do. Um, if you want the parts, try to figure it out. That's cool. Check the documentation on it. Make sure that the wires are going to where, you know, they're, you're expecting. I uh, need to make sure that you're, you know, that you're, Hots are going to the two blades and your, you know, your hot wires are going to the two blades and the ground is going to the bottom. Um, you know, check your, your plug, whatever, you know, if it's a 1030, a NEMA 1450, uh, a 1530, whatever, whatever type of plug it is, it's going to come with documentation as to which ones are the hots and which ones, you know, which ones are the voltage and which ones are the ground. So, you know, you'll be able to to figure that out. And if you don't feel comfortable figuring that out, don't do it. Don't touch it. Um, and uh, there are some pre-made plugs that actually exist. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. They're a little expensive. They're just, more, you know, if you make it yourself, it's cheaper. That's just kind of the way it works. But other than that, um, you know, I've got some other tips that I'll probably be running through, uh, different things that uh, work with this ID4. Uh, maybe even some tips and tricks that I've kind of come across that uh, might be some of those hidden deals. So I'll probably put something like that out soon. So go ahead and subscribe to hear some more of that stuff. And if you're going to crash, crash into that like button and subscribe for more. And we'll see you in the next one. Y'all have a fantastic day.